It's Sunday morning and we're going to learn how to use a mocha pot because I need the industrial strength copy today. And we're also going to attempt to make a Cafe Cubano keto style. So it's your typical mocha pot, they come in different sizes and it's basically a bottom siphon coffee pot and you can get the electric kind, this is a stove top, you put your coffee here and in the base you put your water and you fill up to the little screw bolt line right there you don't want to go past that or else you're going to cause leaks on the other side you have your filter and you also have this silicone ring you want to keep this nice and clean there are baby cats running everywhere just running amok all right so you want to keep this really clean to prevent uh, leaking and you also want to make sure it stays nice and flexible this one's getting a little old it might need to be replaced all right so we have with a mocha pot you want to use an espresso ground we have a Cuban Cuban coffee which is very common at the market called cafe Bustelo. and for a sweetener we're going to be attempting allelos today so you get to watch the experiment now here's a little trick before, yeah, there's several types of Cuban coffee in the market. This is, just happens to be the one I found, Cafe Bustelo. Now, here's a little trick. When you use a mocha pot, a lot of people complain that the, the coffee gets bitter. Well, it can get bitter because of the heat from the stove making and, and burning the coffee grounds as it comes up, making the taste more bitter. So if you boil some coffee, or boil some water first. It's Sunday morning. I need the industrial stuff. All right. So if you boil the the water first, you can actually prevent your your beans from your grounds from burning, and that way your coffee does not get as bitter. And it's espresso roast, so it's going to be a little bitter anyway. All right. Next thing we want to do, this is our, our coffee basket here. Um, so we want to fill this thing up. And you can see the grounds are very finely ground. It's, uh, it, you know, any espresso, when you're making an espresso drink, is going to be a very finely ground drink, ground uh, coffee bean. Um, even more so if you're making a Turkish coffee. So. You don't want to pack this down and tamp this down like you would with like a regular espresso. Instead, you want to just get it up to the line and you want to make sure that your rim around the um, basket here is clean to prevent leaking. So we're going to put that in there and we are going to screw the top on. Make sure you're nice and snug. Put that right there. And we are going to turn it on a higher heat and we're gonna open this part up so we can see it when it starts coming through the siphon. Now, we have our allulose. Typically Cuban coffee is made with sugar. This is the closest thing to sugar that uh, as far as function that we found. So we're going to an attempt a Cuban coffee. We're going to put a couple of uh, tablespoons of sugar per serving, or allulose per serving, in this little mixing bowl. I really need the coffee. So, and we want to get something to mix with. Now the trademark of a Cuban coffee is this nice kind of frothy, foamy top, and it's super delicious. For me, I tend to not go this sweet, especially in the morning, um, but that's what it is. Now, 
as the base here it heats up, it's going to push the water up through, it's, you know, basic chemistry, it's going to push the water up through the siphon and up into the pot here. And we're going to need a spoon. And what we're going to do is we're going to capture some of this as it starts to come up through. It's already starting to boil up. So I'm going to put a couple tablespoons in here. And what we're going to do is we are going to start mixing this in. So what you want to do is you want to get the allulose. There are random cats all over the place. I don't know if you guys know, but there are a lot of cats here. We have seven cats. One dog. It's a virtual menagerie. Okay. So see how we're doing this right here? This is going to get really nice and frothy as we're putting, putting this in here. Now, one of the other things too that you want to do is after the coffee starts coming up through the mocha pot and it's, it, the, the, it stops going nuts like that and it's already all up and splattered down. We're going to close that because it's really going nuts. We want to cool the pot down. That way we can prevent the grounds from burning and making that super bitter coffee. Yep, still flying. All right. Now, mocha pots are kind of handy, especially for camping. They make little cool camping ones. And they also, you know, for travel, if you have like a little camp stove, I used it in my truck quite a bit. And I can get a nice strong coffee going. They make different sizes. So you can get a nice little travel one to go with you. And if you get like one of those little, uh, Pocket rocket stoves, a little gas thing going, and you could totally make this on the go. And if you want, you could add in, you know, your, your, uh, you can make a cafe de leche and add some cream to it. Normally you would add milk, or you could add some, um, some collagen powder for, you know, for the nice joints and stomach action going for health there. Um, uh, so today we're just going to go the basic Cafe Cubano. All right. All right, it's stopped going, so I am going to give this a quick rinse. And basically what I want to do is stop the cooking action. So I just want to cool this off. All right. Now we got a nice strong coffee here. And we are going to mix. So this isn't quite getting the foam action that you would with you get sugar, but you're getting a little bit of foam up here. And I'm going to pour in my tiny cup. All right, so we didn't get quite the same thing. Like I said, this is an experiment, but I got my coffee. It's very tasty. It's very sweet. Great way to go for the morning. Have a great day.